Today in Review This Thing, we're going to review this thing, the Vortex HD 5000 AB Laser Range Finding Binoculars. This is Adrian with Review This Thing, and if you find yourself getting really tired of glassing through your binoculars, then having to put them down, find your rangefinder to range your game, then you're definitely going to want to watch this video. You're also going to want to watch this video if you are tired of using tables and apps and various things to keep up with your ballistic data. Tested these out at the range. We also took them elk hunting in Montana and deer hunting in Missouri. So we're ready to tell you what we think. Let's review this thing. As always, we're going to cover the facts. The first part is fit. The Vortex Fury HD 5000 binoculars come in 10 by 42. They're fairly compact at 5.8 inches tall by 5 inches wide, and they weigh barely just over 2 pounds. So they're lightweight enough and small enough to be able to carry pretty easily. These binoculars actually come with this Vortex Glass Pack Bino Harness, but at their size they should also fit very comfortably in just about every other chest pack out there. Interpupillary distance is adjustable between 58 to 72 millimeters. These do have, like most binoculars, these twist up eye cups, and you can also adjust the focus, the center focus, the diopter focus, and of course the out there focus. So that's pretty much all there is to discuss about fit. Anybody should be able to get to fit their eyes, and they'll fit in just about any chest pack out there. So because of that, we're going to have to give fit a 5 out of 5. Now are the Vortex Fury HD 5000 AB binoculars as advertised. Now most of this video review is going to be focused in this section because I know that's really what you want to know about. So if you're looking at just the Fury HD 5000, then you're going to get range finding capabilities and binocular. However, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about the AB or applied ballistic functionality of these binoculars. So the first thing they advertise is that it takes the guesswork out of making those long range shots. The first step to using these binoculars is setting up the profile in the app. Now you can use the default profiles that they already have loaded, but it's easy and it doesn't really take that much time to create your own custom profiles. You can set up three different profiles. So if you do some bench shooting with one gun, but then you hunt with another one, or if you're in a situation like we were with our Montana elk hunt and we had three different shooters, then you can set up a profile for each hunter. You can get most of that information on the box of ammo, or you can do what we did and use a lab radar or some other chronograph to get the specific muzzle velocity for that load in that gun. And the more information you can input, the better the results you'll get, including it also has a chart where you can put different muzzle velocities at different temperatures. So if you want to get really specific, then you take it to the range in a bunch of different conditions and get as much information as you can. And then you sync the app to the binos and you're ready to go. We did some field testing of these binos a few weeks ago. Now we did not make adjustments for windage, so the left and right wasn't always dead center, but we were super impressed with how easy it was to just get that information, dial the turret based on it, and hit exactly where we wanted to. And as I mentioned, we also were able to test these out on our elk hunt. It was the last morning and lots of action happened really fast, but at one point I was able to range the elk at 309 yards, tell Robbie to make his 2.2 adjustment, and it looked like an absolutely perfect hit. Now, one thing we learned on that trip is that elk are apparently some pretty doggone tough animals, and after lots and lots and lots of tracking, we actually did not find it, which, you know, we absolutely hate. But we were, again, really impressed with being able to get that scope right where it needed to be and make what we thought was a perfect shot. The next thing Vortex advertises is that it has built-in environmental sensors that make all of that calculation even faster. So even as you go in real time, these binoculars are adjusting that ballistic information even more. And if you want to be even more specific about the weather, you can connect to a Kestrel device or a Garmin so you can get more exact weather data as well as direct windage information. I will mention here that it didn't seem like in the cold temperatures that the thermometer was as accurate as it was when it was warmer. Potentially because for most of the time they were in a chest pack, so maybe being covered in that pack or just being up against his body heat kept the temperature off. But in those warmer temperatures, when we were at the range, it was almost perfect. Next, Vortex advertises that the in-display ballistic information makes taking those long shots even easier. So, so far, everything I've told you has been about gaining information by looking at the app. But all of that information is also in the display. So, like when we were hunting in Montana, I was able to just range it with the binoculars, see the distance in that display, and see the turret adjustment right there. They also advertise it can range out to 5,000 yards, out to 2,400 for a tree or something like that, and out to 1,600 for deer. 
Now we never were able to find something 1600 yards away, but I know for a fact that we were ranging elk and mule deer that were at least 12 or 1300 yards away. One day we were basically in a cloud and because of that, it did have a bit of a challenge being able to range certain things, but our friend had a laser range finder. These were able to get further distances more accurately than his, but they are still gonna be limited if you have a lot of fog. Lastly, and there are a ton of other settings that you can adjust. We're not gonna get into all of that here because that would make this video 45 minutes long, but just know you can be as detailed or as general as you like. Now, as far as scoring, I am gonna take a little bit off because the temperature didn't seem to be as accurate as would be ideal. Again, I don't think it hurt us. So because of that, we're gonna give as advertised a 4.85 out of five. Now onto construction and durability. First, I wanna look at the placement of the control buttons. The measure button is basically right where your right index finger sits naturally. So using the rangefinder is very easy to do. And the menu buttons as well as the wind direction buttons are also really easy to reach. Next, we were pretty impressed with the quality of the glass. It may not be as good as some of those really high end binoculars, but for our purposes, we always felt like we could clearly see what we were trying to find. The lenses also have an Armatech scratch resistant coating and their XR fully multi-coated for further protection. With a week long trip to Missouri and a week long trip to Montana, these lenses are still clear and scratch free. The exterior rubber armor, they call it, gives extra protection. So if you drop it, it protects it even more. It also makes it easy to hold on to them. So if it's wet, you're not gonna be likely to let them slip out of your hands. As far as durability, I can tell you that these have been dropped a few times and no damage whatsoever. They still look fantastic and work great. In addition to that, as with all Vortex optics, they have their lifetime warranty on these. So if something happens, Vortex will repair or replace them. In the construction durability section, I always try to think of something that could be improved upon, but I really don't think there's much we would change about these. Because of that, we're gonna give construction durability a five out of five. Now onto testimonials and reviews. Overall, looking at various different retail sites, the Vortex Fury gets really good scores. There aren't many complaints, but you know I wanna tell you what the ones we found were. The first thing somebody mentioned that the app wouldn't download on their Android 13 device. I don't know about that. We have iPhones and it worked great on ours. Another person mentioned that the glass quality isn't as high as it is with some other higher end binoculars. Full disclosure, I don't know that I've spent much time looking through $3,000 binoculars. So if I did, I may be able to tell the difference, but if you're like me, these are gonna be great. There were a couple of different people I found that mentioned ranging steel targets out to like 800 or 1,000 yards that they had some trouble with that. We haven't ranged targets past about 500 yards. There's a couple things on the website where it can help you. If you've ranged things that far out, comment and let us know if you've had trouble or if you have any tips or tricks. And a couple other people mentioned that they wish the refresh rate was a little bit faster. So click the button, it ranges it, it tells you that distance, then it refreshes and tells you the turret adjustments that you need to make. At the range, it's not a big deal. I will say whenever I was trying to get that information for Robbie and the elk, in that moment, everything feels like it's too slow. So that might be nice if that was just a little bit faster. And then the last thing I wanna mention is something that Robbie actually pointed out. He is left eye dominant and the display is in the right eye. He says that sometimes he has to put a little extra effort into focusing on the display because naturally his left eye is the one that wants to do most of the looking. So keep that in mind. If you are pretty strongly left eye dominant, you may wanna check some of these out in a store before you decide if you wanna buy them. Well, you know what we do? We're gonna tell you the score we found for testimonials and reviews. Overall, it gets a 4.8 out of five. And lastly, the whole reason you're here, should you buy this thing? At this point, you know the drill. It all depends on what you're looking for and how much money you wanna spend. If you do most of your shooting at a range with targets at known distances and you can quickly pull up an app and use that ballistic data, then you may not need these. Also, if you primarily hunt in the woods or in small fields where your shot may never be over 200 yards, then this may not be something you wanna invest in either. Now you could obviously use them bow hunting. It's still gonna eliminate the need for binoculars and a rangefinder. But in that case, I would just go with the non-AB version. But if you are gonna be hunting in areas where you may take a 300, 400 plus yard shot, I can't think of a good reason why I would tell you not to buy these. MSRP on the AB version is about 2000 and the non-AB is about 1500. Retail, I found them a few different places for roughly about $500 less than MSRP. But for simplicity, ease of use, reliability, and the confidence it gave us on those trips, it's a pretty good investment. I am gonna take just a little bit off because of the pricing, but I will say that they are in line with most of the other range finding ballistic binoculars that I've seen. 
So because of that, I'm gonna give Should You Buy This Thing a 4.8 out of five. Hey, thanks for watching our Vortex Fury HD 5000 AB binocular review video. While you're here, give us a thumbs up, comment, share it with your friends. Go to our website, reviewthisthingtv.com, subscribe to our newsletter so you don't miss a thing. Subscribe to our channel. Make sure you follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Check out our Holler store, check out our Amazon storefront. 